Now, there's not a gamer among us who hasn't been swept up in the hype of a much anticipated video game. And hype can come in many forms. It can be fostered by an intense marketing campaign, a devoted fan base, almost often an unhealthy dose of both. And while it's always tremendously satisfying when a game lives up to the astronomical levels of hype it gets, say The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild or Elden Ring, it's sadly far more common for games to fall short of this pre-release buzz. And that's what we're here to talk about today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games ruined by overhype. Number 10, Batman Arkham Knight. Now, Batman Arkham Knight admittedly had a lot to live up to, serving as the finale to Rockstar's largely beloved run of Batman Arkham games. Beyond following up to the fantastic Arkham City and its lesser received prequel Arkham Origins, Arkham Knight tantalized fans pre-release with the mystery of the Arkham Knight's identity, as well as the intriguing introduction of the Batmobile for the first time and the general promise of an epic conclusion to the series. And to be sure, Arkham Knight is a good game, but one harangued by enough issues that it ultimately fell short of most other titles in the franchise. Even beyond the monstrous technical issues upon launch, especially for PC players, the Arkham Knight reveal was hugely disappointing and the Batmobile implementation was bafflingly dull. Though the core combat was still terrific and the story mostly hit the right notes, Arkham Knight was ultimately a messy, uneven ending for the franchise and a textbook example of a game undone by its own runaway hype. And you can't even fully blame the studio or the marketing team here. Fans didn't need much help to convince themselves that it had to be the best game in the series, and when it wasn't, well, they were fuming. Number 9. Fable Nowadays, we all know not to trust the snake oil salesman known as Peter Molyneux as far as we can throw him, but back in 2004, his name still carried a lot of weight, and it was tough not to get swept up in the hype surrounding his bold new Xbox RPG, Fable. Molyneux spent years hyping up the game's uncommonly immersive gameplay systems, from trees that grow as time passes to the player's physicality changing depending on their behavior and even the ability to have children. Numerous anticipated features, including the ones I just mentioned, failed to make it into the final game. And while it is a decent RPG in its own right, it was way too short and insubstantial to make the impact that the game press and general players expected. Ultimately, Fable further damaged Molyneux's relationship with players, which had already begun to erode after his previous game Black and White didn't meet the pre-release promises. Molyneux even publicly apologized for overhyping Fable, and though he went on to produce several sequels, he never regained the trust of the general gaming audience. He also hasn't released a AAA game since 2010's Fable 3 and largely declines press interviews these days. It's almost like he knows better. Although saying that, he's now an NFT property magnate, so uh, maybe he doesn't. Number 8. Halo 5 Guardians Now, any Halo sequel is of course going to get hyped into the damn stratosphere, though Halo 5 Guardians is a uniquely frustrating case because the marketing basically sold players a campaign that they really never got to play. The trailer suggested that the game would be centered around an epic feud between Master Chief and the game's protagonist Spartan Locke, with the iconic hashtag hunt the truth campaign whipping fans into a frenzy wondering what Chief had done to make him so aggressively sought after. Yet the Chief slash Locke dichotomy is ultimately just a tiny part of the story, and their only confrontation ends up being a cutscene rather than a playable boss fight that most players were surely and rightly hoping for. While it didn't help that the campaign also suffered from repetitive warden boss fights and a generally listless plot, the PvP multiplayer is still spectacular and, as with most Halo games, the real reason to own it. Yet Guardians' multiplayer achievements are vastly overshadowed by the game itself being hyped up as breaking new ground for the franchise when it really did anything but. Number 7. Dead Island Now, Dead Island is a totally competent open-world zombie game, and yet it wasn't the same type of game that Techland got everyone excited about with that first reveal trailer. That trailer is so impactful and iconic, in fact, it even has its own damn wicked Wikipedia page. The game's 2011 reveal trailer depicted the zombification and subsequent death of a young girl while on holiday with her family, the scene playing out in reverse to maximize the emotional impact, and this led players to reasonably expect a character-driven, viscerally charged take on the genre. But there's perhaps never been a larger tonal gulf between a game trailer and the final product, as Dead Island was a distinctly single-minded zombie slaughtering romp that, while fitfully enjoyable, lacked the substance and nuance that was implied by this gorgeously art trailer. While it's a solid rule of thumb to always be skeptical of video game marketing, especially when it doesn't show any gameplay like this one did, publisher Deep Silver only had themselves to blame for the game's lukewarm reception upon release, and it also didn't help that the game was released with tons of bugs. Number 6. The Last of Us Part 2 The Last of Us Part 2 was perhaps the single most anticipated video game of the last five years, a sequel to one of the most innovative and narratively ambitious video games ever made, and which consequently had a lot to live up to. Now it would be silly to call Naughty Dog 
Dogs action horror sequel anything but a rousing success from a sales perspective, seeing as it recently passed the 10 million units sold milestone and was largely praised by critics, but the player response, however, was considerably more polarizing. The problem, inevitably, is that so many fans had a very precise idea in their heads of what The Last of Us Part II should be. Another adventure centered around Joel and Ellie while refining the gameplay systems and expanding the scope of what came before. After years of waiting to play this sequel, this fixed concept basically became immovable for many players. And so, when the game finally released in 2020 and it didn't give them what they wanted, well, the backlash was ferocious. The bold decision, and spoilers incoming in 3, 2, 1, to kill off Joel in the first few hours of the game and then have players spend almost half the game playing as his killer left many players irate. The fan base's most toxic tendencies quickly revealed themselves, with members of the dev team and performers online getting death threats, enough so that discussing the game basically became a depressing and exhausting chore. It's incredibly difficult for any sequel to fully live up to a beloved original, and though in the eyes of many, The Last of Us Part II absolutely did this, the game's messy legacy is a direct result of fans refusing to believe that it could be anything but the exact product that they decided they wanted years before. Number 5. Dark Souls 2 To look at its Metacritic score of 91 or 92 if you're on a PS3, you'd never think that Dark Souls 2 could possibly be considered overhyped. On paper, it seems like a game that categorically lived up to fan expectations, right? But the player response to the highly anticipated sequel was considerably more polarizing, with many feeling that it was a follow-up that fell far short of its predecessor's polish and finesse. It's unfortunately telling that this is from Software's only Soulsborne game not directed by Hidetaka Miyazaki, because while certain being a solid game by any typical metric, the level design and combat were ultimately way below the expected standard. It felt like somebody else trying their hardest to make a Dark Souls game, which was pretty much the case in fact. And while most developers would kill to have their games review as well as Dark Souls was upon release, players were expecting a game that definitively won up the original. Thankfully Miyazaki has since helmed every subsequent Soulsborne title the studios put out to massive acclaim, with Dark Souls 2 enduring as a good game that was damned by the genre-defining success of its predecessor. Number 4. Knack It may live on largely as a glorified meme these days, but you know what? Sony's platformer Knack is actually a pretty fun time. It's certainly not a genre classic by any means, but it's a solid, at times unexpectedly challenging romp. The big problem with Knack is that it was hyped up pre-release as one of the PS4's cornerstone launch titles, an apparently innovative platformer that would serve as a stunning showcase for both the PS4 console and its nifty new DualShock 4 controller. Adding to the anticipation was the game being directed by Mark Kearney, a pivotal voice in the earlier Crash Bandicoot games and who touted Knack as a 21st century Crash Bandicoot. Yet, as is often the case with console launch titles, Knack was far more of a mid-tier experience and certainly far away from the creativity and iconic appeal of Crash Bandicoot. But the fundamentals, well, they were all there. Knack was a colourful platformer with a solid form-changing gimmick that, had it launched at any other time in the PS4's life cycle, would have probably been embraced as a more modest genre throwback. Tellingly, the 2017 sequel was considerably better received, enough so that a small but loyal legion of fans are still hopeful that Knack 3 might eventually see the light of day on the PS5. Number 3. Star Wars The Old Republic now, any game that is pushed as the killer of an existing market leader is basically setting itself up to be overhyped, and that is exactly the case of 2011's MMORPG Star Wars The Old Republic. After launching in 2004, World of Warcraft quickly became the most popular MMO ever and reached a peak of 12 million subscribers shortly before The Old Republic's release. The press and players alike considered that a Bioware-produced Star Wars MMO might finally have what it takes to knock Blizzard off its perch once and for all. With the promise of of glossier production values than any other MMO, as well as a cinematic, fully voice-acted story for each of the game's eight classes, The Old Republic had as good a chance as any to topple World of Warcraft. But despite its strong launch, it quickly became clear that there just wasn't enough content in the base game to keep players subscribed for the long haul. As such, the player count soon fell off a bloody cliff, causing it to go free to play less than a year after its release. Now, to be clear, The Old Republic has turned a massive profit for EA regardless, having grossed almost $1 billion by late 2019, but considering that World of Warcraft had grossed a stonking $9.23 billion by 2017 and The Old Republic had just a fraction of its overall player count, it never got anywhere close to threatening its spot. Ultimately, The Old Republic is still an enjoyable experience, albeit one whose most worthwhile content could be quickly burned through, in turn failing to sustain long-term interest. Number 2. Watch Dogs Few new IP have made as much of an impact with their first gameplay reveal alone as Watch Dogs, which was announced at Ubisoft's 2012 E3 presser and categorically stole the show. The 
brief gameplay slice showed off eye-wateringly beautiful next-gen graphics while focusing on a deliciously enticing gameplay loop, the ability to hack and manipulate seemingly any technology in the vicinity to your will. Ubisoft did a frankly fantastic job of hyping Watch Dogs up to be a game-changer that would reinvent the open-world action game as we knew it, perhaps even offering a rare worthy challenger to Grand Theft Auto's mantle. The fans certainly believed it. And though Watch Dogs released to strong sales and solid reviews, the consensus across the board was that it fell far short of the frothing hype. The visuals were ultimately majorly downgraded from their original E3 showing, the hacking mechanics were more limited than expected, and the story and characters were relatively generic, even dull. It was a decent stab at remixing the GTA open world formula for sure, but left shockingly little of a lasting impression, in turn hobbling a franchise right out of the gate that's failed to make a dent ever since. And number one, Spore. When a game is mounted as the spiritual successor to The Sims, it is very easy to get swept up in the hype. Spore was Sims developer Maxis's ambitious take on a god game, where players could foster an alien species from the most basic stages of life to impossibly complex spacefaring advancement. Now, EA did a fantastic job selling Spore as THE Sim game, a procedurally generated sandbox title with a basically boundless amount of possibility for the player to create their own alien race. And though Spore received solid reviews from critics, the player response was considerably more divisive, with many rightly criticising it for the shocking simplicity of its gameplay. The mind-boggling scope of Spore's core concept had been boiled down to a series of five simplistic minigames that sustained interest for a few hours at most. What was supposed to be a gaming watermark of its era was a bafflingly straightforward sim that had its esteem blown wildly out of proportion for years before finally coming out. And there we go my friends, those were 10 video games that were ruined by overhype. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always I've been Jules, you can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ but the O is a zero. We can swing by Instagram where it's the same handle, RetroJ but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I am going to hype you up, my friend, with a dose of positivity because you deserve love, happiness, and success, and you are a massive ledge. You are a good person, and I want you to go out there and smash your life goals today. I believe in you, and you need to believe in yourself as well. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.